Why don't we start with a sort of funny question about, um, it's been quite a long time since you've had your last record out. Was the last record the album no. that you did? The last record was Gl- Glider. Last um, May or April. So are you, did creation put you under any pressure to sort of fulfil release schedules or no. are you able just to work in your own time? Mm. We are. No. I mean, basically, we just, when the record's finished, it's finished, however long that might be, as it seems. So do you work in a particular way, which means that you need time to evolve the material? Yeah, we only do anything, something when we feel like it, so, because we haven't felt like it half the time, we didn't do anything for half the time, so, uh, instead of sort of saying, oh, well, we're in the studio and we have to do something today, you know, I mean, so many bands do that, they're just filling a role of making the music for the um, record date, release date, you know, as opposed to making the music for, this, for the reason, whatever reason you do it, so we've got nothing to do with release dates, I mean, sure, we're aware of things like that, we have to be to a certain extent because of touring and that, you know, but not really. Has there been, have you felt sort of under pressure artistically, because you know, you've had everything you've done, but even when you first appeared, um, it's been greeted with quite a lot of, you know, press hysteria and sort of delight and well, stuff. We spent three years being quite hated, actually, so I think that prepared us for anything, really. you know. I mean, if we've had a lot of bad reviews from a long time ago. It's only since we were on Croatian that we started getting, like, particularly good press. Um, and. It doesn't seem that long ago, so, I mean, in a way, so I don't know, it doesn't um, Just going back to Blistel, and one of the points that Simon Reynolds make, well, all through the book, but with your music in particular, like how sort of languorous and sort of time suspended it is, um, and is that conscious, is that part of what my bloody Valentine's about? Not really. I mean, the, the one thing is that mo- most of what we do is very direct. Even even though it might people might think it sounds a bit kind of ethereal or something, it's actually it's actually listen to it is even the, the the soft guitar sounds are are actually very direct soft guitar sounds in the sense that they're not full of reverb and stuff. We don't, people think we do. We use tons of reverb. We use we don't and. Um, you don't use that many effects either. It's the way we play the guitar makes makes things seem to sound they can't grasp it. And so when they can't grasp it, they think, oh, it must be ethereal and far away, but it isn't really. It's actually very direct. Most of the stuff, like soon, for example, there isn't any reverb or effects on it at all. It's just really direct sounds. But because of the way they're played, it sounds um, hard to grasp, you know, in the normal way. And um, I don't know, people. Well, what I mean is that I don't really feel, we don't feel ethereal or anything like that. So it's not on purpose, it's just the way we play, really. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't sort of saying ethereal, but... I know you weren't, but, uh, but people do, like, I don't... Um, yeah, I suppose so. I mean, I don't really like using a lot of effort doing that, doing fast like that. I don't that using much effort anyway. No. I mean, it's the easiest route, you know, to whatever we want. So maybe... Do you think that the um, sexual balance in the group, um, maybe ask you, Belinda, has got something to do with the sort of music you create, the sexual dynamic of the band? Um, maybe in a way, but I don't know. I mean, music. Well, Kevin makes sort of music, so if there's any femininity in that, it's, it's you know, it comes from him mostly. You know, I suppose you know. Because there's two women in the band, there's always there is that balance there, you know. So. Yeah, I mean, if it was a band for the guys, you know, just I mean, it happened in bands like that before. Well, sort of lineups of this band, and um, I think there's a bit less um, of the usual some of the cliches that bands can fall into because you do constantly just fall into a cliche. It's, it's hard to not not to do it. And um, half of them are eliminated because half of the things that happen when you're on tour, if you're full of band full of guys, just don't seem to happen. So um, in general, it puts a, a different slant on it. You know, we're not just content to play rock and roll. You know, and 
I don't know why, for no particular reason, just we're not, you know, so it kind of drives you to try and push things a bit further all the time, just because it's the only way you can get any pleasure out of it. So, maybe that, you know, I mean, it's not like we kind of have, because there's like some girls in the band that we have to make the music so, somehow feminine, I think it's on purpose. What about, because uh, even the name, My Bloody Valentine, and certainly a lot of the sort of images that you use on sleeve, say the new sleeve, mm. is a lot to do with sort of sexuality and desire. Mm. Is that one of the main things that you, areas that you write in or mood you try, try and create? Sometimes, not always, not, not much at the moment, probably. Um, Everything, <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, but um, but it's not in a kind of like dreamy sort of way. It's not, it's not um, idealistic or anything. It's quite, it's pretty messed but up a lot of the time. With everybody, you know, sex is not just like good things. It's all sorts of things. So. It's all all the elements. Yeah. Mm. I mean, um, well, anyway. <laughs> How do you find your sort of relationship with creation just now, you know, because we've been talking quite a lot about the different direction that creation is taking. We think trying to incorporate a dance element into the label was originally going to be two separate labels, now it's like coming to one thing. Mm -hmm. um, and you've been, I know you've just been remixed, haven't you? Not just been, it was nearly a year was a ago. ago. Yeah, yeah and, and that was Andy Weatherall, and the main reason for that was because he was, was like, banned and that. I was one of the few kind of like remixer type guys who we really liked, genuinely liked his music. He, when he was doing stuff in tune the year before, I hadn't gone with Colin, we'd gone with some friends a lot. And he, he was the one that they always went on about the guy who did the really interesting things. And so, you know, there was just somebody who was, there was no way we would ever come in contact with any other way. So it seemed like a good thing to do. And if, if now, if we had been asked, we wouldn't have done it. But then it did. And we're, not that we regret doing it because we really liked it, but. It's just whatever we feel like doing. That's why people tend to think we're always coming up with a new direction. It's not really like that. It's just a case of, because we are genuinely just doing what we want to do, we have a tendency to go off in whatever direction you do. How do you find working with creation? I mean, a lot of people have been saying, talking about it being a different sort of approach as a label. It was much more familial mm -hmm. in the sense of being like a family sort of thing. Well, it's the first label that we were at. I mean, all the other labels that we'd on, been on before were a lot more, um, we hadn't been on any really big labels, or even right now, except for Lazy Records, which gave us pretty much nothing but a hard time, you know, really, to tell the truth. And um, they made me very, very cynical. And um, kind of the whole creation thing kind of opened things up. I mean, we got a contract with them that, that's just so... It's so fair that people, the music business views that to be a contract completely on our side. Well, it's just fair, you know. And um, we just put in words what we practiced anyway. So in that sense, we have a, some people would say, an ex extraordinary sort of really good relationship with the label. But, I mean, otherwise everything's okay. I'm <laughs> Um, I mean, I, want, I did want to talk a bit more, I don't know, it's quite hard to talk about it, about the sort of mood of your music and the sort of the, the images you do use, because uh, I think they are quite specific to you. And it's not, it's not ethereal, it's actually quite powerful, but yeah. it is also quite soft. And even the name, mm -hmm. My Bloody Valentine, mm -hmm. combines that those two sort of mm. opposites. I mean, it wasn't on purpose, really, but the name, I mean, when that name was sort of adopted, we weren't really a serious band. It was just, you know, but it just, because things just evolved kind of haphazardly, nothing was ever planned, so we kind of wound up with this name that I often don't like, really, to tell the truth, but then again, in association with the band and the music, I quite like it. But when I, uh, because I'm in the band, I can often separate it and it's, I don't like it at all. So it's kind of lucky in a way that it does actually have that connotation. And we have, it's actually just luck. 
I wasn't really planned or anything like that. So. Is there anyone else around at the moment, musically, you know, who you think? Because I think, oh, there was a moment, like, in this where you missed out and Simon Reynolds, sort of marshals all these groups that he thinks are of a, of a type, if you like, if not musically, sort of spiritually or whatever. Mm. And you seem to be the only people who have maintained that direction. I mean, are you, do you feel any affiliations with any other sort of musics that are going around at the moment, or do you keep yourselves pretty oriented to what you're doing? I mean, basically, I mean, we've always just like all sorts of things. I mean, so that's another cop-out type thing, but it's true, you know, that's the problem. And, um, I mean, there's bands that we get compared to and stuff that most of the bands, most of them we actually like anyway. I don't mind being compared to them. It doesn't, it doesn't matter afraid of being compared to people. We had so much of it for so long. We've, we've, we've proved that, you know, you can be derivative as hell. Like, people can say you're like this, that and the other, but you can't. If you just forget about it, do what you want, you, do what you, are, you just wind up coming out with your own thing. And that's all we're going to, that's all we think about. So, I'm going to, I mean, most of the bands that have come, come after us and where it comes because it's not like they have really um, that are supposed to be like us I mean I mostly like all of them some of them I think are really good I won't say who but and that's it really and all the bands that we were compared to around that time I mean I quite, quite like most of them as well still do most of them I mean a couple of them have broken up and like Dinosaur Jean for example I mean we're, we're just kind of as fans of that band you know but no, we don't take it too seriously or anything. It's just like, it isn't like we, we can't kind of listen to see if we are both going off in the right direction and all this kind of stuff. It's, you know, it's just one of those things. I know, and it's also that sort of music that's actually really difficult to analyse because it's not about words, really. Or... Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's often easier when, easier to get a handle on something when it, you can concentrate on the lyrics. But... Um, I don't think it does anyone any harm to try and describe music occasionally. So how would you describe my bloody Valentine then? Can I mean, I, I, that's it. I've done it. You know, I mean, no, I wouldn't, because I, I, I never, I never find any real description of it's completely accurate. So. But that's not because it might be wrong, it's just because everyone... I, I mean, I see things differently all the time. I mean, every few months, like, it seems like every once in a while, I just kind of... I, I can't remember what I used to think about what we were about. It's something else, something new all the time. So, it's always in a transit. It's always the most... Also, I always thinking ahead a lot about new things that, are good, that we can do, just very really vaguely, kind of very abstract, just ideas, but... So you always feel part of, as much part of that as part of what you've done. And because of that, you can't really say, I am this story. But How does this sort of My Bloody Valentine song evolve? I've got this picture in my head that you... It's quite a collective thing, really, and it sort of unfolds, but maybe that's me. Patrick's fine. We've both got these fabulously sort of pallid complexions here. Huh? <laughs> I said, you've both got these fabulously pallid complexions. <laughs> Something to do with that big white thing over there. Okay, actually, good. Oh, yeah. Well, that's just so. Hey, Garen's been. Oh, yeah, it's just I was saying I've got this idea that uh, my Bloody Valentine song might sort of be evolve in quite a collective way that you know you're all sort of sitting around and it and it comes out of not so much a sort of clinical writing process but a more evolutionary process it's, it's fairly evolutionary but um because a lot of the stuff is written in the studio often like there just might be a guitar part and that's it that is the song as it stands with the drum part then another part and another part as it goes on but the, the generally all the all the songs are just tunes you know they're just like a tune a few chords a few ideas and a melody and um and i'm happy that like if i didn't live on a desert island 
a desert island, I would just do tunes all the time and forget about them the next, do another one the next day. But because it's this is the thing about records and all that, that's all that's another side of it that's got nothing to do with the initial inspiration. That um, to, to make it interesting, that's why often the music goes in a certain like whatever direction it might go, and just because it can get boring after you've done the initial thing, the inspiration, and um, this actually the, the, the monot like it could be monotonous just putting down the ideas, but we just make it constantly interesting by constantly just like letting it go off in any direction. So it is kind of totally, it evolves all the time. And so the song isn't really finished until it's finished. If it, well, yeah, it's fine. But um, it's not even a song until it's finished. That's what I mean. Um, Are we doing this to no. Making up tunes together. Kevin will make up a tune and then sort of work on it in the studio and all ideas in or whatever. But you know, it's not like we sort of all jam together every day and just come up with tunes that way. So. I mean, the, it becomes the band becomes a proper band mainly out of the studio when we tour and stuff. That's when it's a real band, and that that identity and that kind of atmosphere that's in the band gets carried into the studio then, and um, to an extent the music the music then reflects that as opposed to the band isn't actually maybe directly responsible for the music all the time, but it doesn't really matter because it's the atmosphere that really tends to dictate. I don't know why, but it really does. I mean, because things, I'm sure if a, like, someone leaves and someone else comes in, things will just change, even though I still might. Like, uh, with the old stuff, even the change, there seemed to be a so-called dramatic change between when we had an old singer and then when Belinda joined the band. But I, I still wrote the music and stuff, but it was, there was that influence, even though she might not have, like, made up the chord structure, but I don't know why, but there is, for sure. The um, new EP, you know, seems to sort of go, like, in quite a few different directions. Yeah, there's lots of tunes on it. Mm -hmm. All at one time. Are you pleased about that? Um, what do you think? Yeah, I'm pleased with it. <laughs> Because it does seem to be have had quite. I mean, when I think of the album, I know that there's lots of different things on it, but it has more of one feel to it. Mm -hmm. Whereas the the new tracks seem to be have quite different, quite strongly different moods. Yeah. Like your vocal track is something quite different from even the other the other three tracks. I think. Mm -hmm. She sings all of them anyway. But the, the one that the first video is for. Yeah, it's hers. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose it's also because it's made, the records are made over a longer space of time. There's more chance for it to do that. I mean, the only danger would be just getting so self indulgent that, you know, nobody understands what you're trying to do. You wind up making boring music to everyone else. That's the only chance, but I, I like I think I like pop music too much to get too self indulgent. I always kind of I need mean, I like pop music, I mean, even though it might not be seen as a pop band, but you know. I mean, because I, I suppose we are very self indulgent, but I think because we like very immediate music, it, it doesn't come across too, you know, boring, really. Because it could do, you know, and there's so many bands that do worthy things, but ultimately they're quite boring. You know they're worthy, you know they're good, but it's not, also it's not very exciting. You know, there's too much of that around. We, we kind of it's more it's more it's more challenging as well to do something that's really interesting, but also kind of immediate. I mean, I don't really know how immediate this new EP is, so that's the trouble. But we really like it. It's funny to start with. Yeah. They listen to it and just like. A lot of people want to try and fix the record player if <laughs> something is wrong. Or another classic one was people said the cassette was wrong. It's, it's like 10th generation cassette. It was like a perfect quality copy. Mm -hmm. Is it is supposed to sound like that? <laughs> Just one last thing on the sort of done. I mean, have you been affected, do you think, by the um, inclusion now of, of the coming into the label of people like Hypnotone and... Well, all the, all the kind of crowd were around anyway, like like the year before. Like I, mean, I think it is kind of true that creation does generally reflect the taste of what, whoever's listening to what. I mean, that's why all that dance stuff came out on creation as opposed to another label. It wouldn't have been so hard to set up another label. It's only a name. But it's just like, I couldn't be bothered, I think. It's just like, put it out. 
And um, I mean, everyone's been kind of, I mean, everyone pretty much has been kind of fairly engulfed in all this stuff, you know, and stuff that, I mean, because it, there's been so much really, like, new good stuff coming out. There was a lot, anyway. But um, you kind of have to be pretty, um, what's the word? Well, you know, you'd, you'd have to be like some old sort of jazz purist, you know, not to sort of think, oh, well, maybe this is pretty good and get into it like you get into anything. I mean, that's why you've seen so many people with guitars adopting a lot of that, because there is so much energy and excitement that unless unless you're completely blind to it's anything and you're just so self-obsessed that you you wouldn't see it. But I, mean, I think not just about everybody I know has been affected. I mean, I, I, the stuff on the label, it's just... Doesn't mean it's, it doesn't matter whether it's on the label or not. It's just a case of, if you mean, did all these dance people all of a sudden arrive? It's always been like that. It's just a case of they started putting the records out. Mm -hmm.